Good evening, everyone. It is now seven o'clock. I would like to call the Rockdale County Board of Education regular session to order. Tonight, all the way from the Beehive, please help me welcome Adrian Lanier, principal of Honey Creek Elementary School. She is to introduce our inspirational speaker. Welcome. Good evening, Chairwoman Brown, Vice Chair Duncan, Superintendent Dr. Oates, board members, Superintendent's cabinet, and yes, I am the very proud principal of Honey Creek Elementary, and we have the honor of providing the inspiration for tonight's board meeting. First, I would like to thank you all for your years of dedication and support of our learning community. With your combined 49 years of experience, our system is fortunate to have your leadership and support in teaching and growing our students. Although the work is not easy, I would like to thank you for your focus on continuous improvement for our system. It is my pleasure to introduce one of our first grade honeybees, Ms. Mackenzie Shropshire, providing the inspiration for tonight's board meeting through poem, Let No One Seal Your Dreams by Paul Cookson. Let No One Steal Your Dreams by Paul Cookson. Let no one steal your dreams. Let no one tear apart the burning of ambition that fires the drive inside your heart. Let no one steal your dreams. Let no one tell you that you can't. Let no one hold you back. Let no one tell you that you won't. Set your sights and keep them fixed. Set your sights on high. Let no one steal your dreams. Your only limit is the sky. Let no one steal your dreams. Follow your heart, follow your soul, for only will you follow them. Will you feel truly whole? Set your sights and keep them fixed. Set your sights on high. Let no one steal your dreams. Your only limit is the sky. Oh. Thank you. Thank you, Mackenzie. Thank you, Mackenzie. I enjoyed that speech that you just shared. Would you please um, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Would all stand, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one in nation, under God, and invisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do I hear a motion to approve the agenda as presented to the board? So moved, Heather. Second. A motion to approve the agenda has been presented uh, by Ms. Duncan and second by Ms. Jones. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. The next item on the agenda is the superintendent's cabinet update. Dr. Oates, please introduce our speakers. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairwoman and Madam Vice Chairwoman and each board member and also my cabinet and all of our guests. Uh, I, uh, it gives me a great deal of pleasure to introduce Ms. Hope Pendergrass, who's a familiar face, and she generally comes bearing very good news, and I believe that'll be the case this evening from Malden and Jenkins for our 2022 audit update, Ms. Pendergrass. Thank you, Dr. Oates. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to come and speak to you all tonight. That's a hard act to follow, but I will do my best. You know, accounting is so exciting. Um, so I believe that um, Mr. Keith passed out to you all what we call our auditors discussion and analysis. It's a little quick book. This is just kind of our summary document that we like to present to you all that just kind of gives you a summary of the audit. I'll start off by saying that I have excellent news to share with you all. You got what's called an unmodified opinion on your financial statements. That's the best that you can get. 
So congratulations to the board and its leadership and your senior cabinet and staff and the financial team. It's, it's one of the, the um, audits that we enjoy working on the most, so they're always very gracious and they make our job easy. Um, as far as your your compliance audit, like not only do we do an audit of your financial statements, we auto, also do an audit of your financial programs. And that's some of the things, especially in the light of all this COVID money, where we're kind of building the airplane while we're flying it as far as the rules and regulations. So I'm happy to also report that, you know, we looked at a sample of that and you all did an excellent job. We had no, nothing to report in that area as well. So not only are you keeping the finances in check, you're also dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's when it comes to federal compliance. Um, just a summary, I'm not going to go through everything on this page um, in this book. I would like to flip to page five. It has a little paragraph at the bottom. And this talks about um, your general fund revenues. So for purposes of our financial report, we kind of consolidate all of your federal programs as well as what you all are used to seeing as your general fund into one fund. So when you look at this number, don't go, wait a minute, that looks a little higher than what I'm used to. That also includes all your federal funds. But you took in about $252 million for, again, the year ended 6-30-22, and that, that pie graph kind of shows you where it came from. The majority of your funding, of course, comes from the state. And then you have your local funds, which includes all your tax revenues, and your federal funds, which would be like your ESSER program, your Title I, all those monies. So that kind of shows you where the money came from. And then on the next page, we have a, a pretty little graph that kind of shows you where it went. And of course, instruction is going to be the largest area of expenditure as anticipated. Um, but then that also kind of shows you where the rest of the money kind of went. Um, as a whole, y'all took in about $10.5 million than what you spent out. Um, which did increase your fund balance, but in light of the governor's new bonus talking about health insurance, aren't you glad you have fund balance now? So, um, Keith, have you had an opportunity to share with them about the, the health insurance? Okay. All right. So, you know, there's a... So, um, Previously, you all have been paying for some years now, you've been paying $945 per employee that participated per month for health insurance. And I believe retroactive to January 1st, the certified positions that you, um, that the state funds, they're going to give you some money to offset this increase, but it's going up to like $1560, $1580 per person per month. Um, and then next year, the classified will go as well, but there's no offset from the state funding for that. So that's a significant increase per employee per month that you're about to have to come out of pocket for. The state's going to fund a portion of it, the positions that they fund, but it's not going to fund the extra class, uh, the extra certified positions or the classified positions. Okay, keep me in check. Yeah, make, make sure. I, hope I, I, I was able to share that with our board in our weekly board brief last Friday, but shared that we have about 100 or so certified employees who won't be covered under under the current formula. So that's so, important as well. Yeah. So if you think about 600 six hundred dollars or so a month times a hundred people times 12 months that's just going to be your effect for the classified and now i mean for the certified and then once you get a classified you know that that's going to be a significant increase so i say all that to say it's a good thing that you had a strong fund balance as of 6 30 for you to be able to kind of weather this until you kind of figure out where exactly it's going to land and is that going to be true and what's the budget going to be for next year and that kind of thing um, so there is a law in Georgia that says that you're only supposed to have 15% in fund balance and you all did exceed that. But again, aren't you glad you did? Because now you have the reserves to continue your initiative and weather some of these changes that you have no control over. That's a cost you don't get to choose. You don't get to say, OK, well, let me shop my health insurance around. You don't really get that option. So it's great that you all are in this strong financial position so that going forward, you are able to continue with the things that you have planned to do anyway. So that's a really good, strong position. Um, another thing I want to point out is we didn't have any audit adjustments. So a lot of times we go places and we get the financial information and we start tying down balances and we have to make some tweaks before we actually present the final financial statements. This is one of the few places that we go that we don't have audit adjustments. You know, the trial balance that we get is the trial balance that you all see. 
So that is um, that is something to be commended for. And, you know, your leadership and also senior management team and the finance department for doing such a good job. So kudos to them. Um, I do have some pages on pages 12 and 13, and this just kind of shows you the impact of the increases in something else that you all don't have a con any control over, and that's your TRS contribution that you have to make. The state kind of tells you what that percentage is, and you just have to fund it. Well, um, going forward, I'm probably going to include something similar to this to show you the the amount of health insurance that you all are going to have to be taking on and considering in your budget so that you can see the impact of these additional costs again that the local board doesn't have any control over and how that impacts your budget um, at the bottom of page 13 we start talking about the gasby's so the gasby is the regulatory body from financial statement perspective they kind of set the accounting rules that we have to follow um, the one i'll highlight here is the one that's effective for the fiscal year that you all are in right now that's fiscal year 23 and what it talks about is you have to record um, a long-term liability and asset for all your software licenses that you have how many software licenses do you all have now you know i think about my son when he logs onto his computer his whole desktop is covered with apps and every one of those apps is a license so before you all just accounted for them, I mean, you paid for them kind of as you went, but you didn't really show them in the financial statements other than you recorded the expense when you paid it. Going forward, you're going to have to actually show that, hey, we've got this long term obligation where we signed on with, I'm going to make this up, McGraw Hill to do eight year um, textbook adoption where we have a textbook, a consumable and a software license. So now you're going to have to actually record that. So that's going to be, a, I would say that's probably going to end up being a combined effort from your technology, your instructional technology people and your finance team to put that information together and present it to us. So that's that's something that's going to change kind of the way your financial statements probably look going forward because you'll have those liabilities out there. Um, other than that, there's some good bedtime can't sleep reading in here about um, the rest of the Gatsby's. But um, other than that, I just want to say, you know, we appreciate the opportunity to work with such a great financial team and, and a great board that provides, you know, support to those initiatives. And I'll be glad to answer any questions if anybody has any. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hope. Next, we welcome the Pine Street Road Runners. Yay! And one of my faves, Mrs. Kim Veer, principal of Pine Street Elementary School, will provide a presentation, school presentation. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, thank you so much for having us. I have some illustrious people behind me, um, but we'll start out by saying good evening. Chairwoman Brown, Vice Chairwoman Duncan, Dr. Oates, and the distinguished members of the Board of Education. Thank you for this opportunity to speak to you this evening about some of the work that we are that Pine Street has been engaged in this year. The lovely people behind me um, are, mem so are members of that core leadership team, or some of them. I have Ms. Tatina Haynes Williams, my right hand, Assistant Principal. I have Ms. Terry Onchitz, who is our media specialist. Specialist, specialist. <laughs> I have Christy King, our RTI coordinator, as well as Nicole Porter, our um, academic coach. So this team, of course, uh, is instrumental in a lot of these plans, but they, of course, are also a huge support to me. And to, I need a clicker. They put me in charge. OK, in 2020, Pine Street was named as a recipient of the L4GA Literacy Grant. At the time of working on the grant proposal and earning the grant, we knew that literacy achievement was an area of growth for us. We did not realize the challenges that we would face as we transitioned in March 2020 to an all virtual experience. As we journeyed through the next two years, we realized the extended opportunities of online book access, as well as what we call the normal opportunities of holding a physical book in our hands were so important to the development of children. Then in the summer of 2022, our core leadership team, along with a few of our teacher leaders, met Malcolm Mitchell and were inspired to find a way to bring him to speak to our children. I want to share a little bit about that video.
like the spinning wheel. Pine Street Elementary. My name is Malcolm Mitchell, author, Super Bowl champion. Here with a special friend of yours. I just want to send a quick message to encourage all of you to always strive to be your best self, work hard, and I believe reading allows us to accomplish all of our goals. So if you're not a strong reader, don't worry. I wasn't either. You can work at it and get better. But more than anything else, never give up. Always have hope and keep working hard. Hopefully someday I get to meet all of you. So in September 2022, we were able to have him come and visit our school and you can see him there amidst some very admiring children. Um, also, our ultimate goal throughout this school year was to engage students with the joy of literacy. Students have many different choices to occupy their time, and we wanted to encourage and engage students in a desire to read. We want to highlight some of those initiatives for student engagement in literacy. One thing is we scheduled several days throughout the year where we highlighted literacy itself, math literacy, and content literacy with a focus on science and social studies. Students engaged in school-wide parades and activities along with grade level planned rotations, highlighting book themes, authors, and concepts. Hello. Um, one aspect of our student engagement was to incentivize student achievement with reading. We use accelerated reader ribbons that they attach to the bottom of their name tags to um, give students a little token to show that we appreciate their achievement. Um, and we, you can see here in our pictures, uh, images of our second grade and our fourth grade students who have earned accelerated ribbon, reader ribbons. Um, we do encourage them to maintain and we give out the ribbons when they maintain an 80% average as well. Okay, we also used L4GA funds to purchase a book vending machine where students can use their PBIS rewards points to purchase books of their own. We also would like to highlight our reading ball team who did an amazing job and scored, came in fourth place for the district, but they had a wonderful time and they really had a great time reading and discussing, having rich conversations about the books they read as well. Another aspect of our literacy program that we don't really add, we don't notice all the time or we don't think of all the time is our news show as a special school wide opportunity for our fifth graders that highlights authentic literacy. We host a daily news show, WPSE News, and each fifth grader, each fifth grade class has a time in the year to host that news show and that they're completely in charge of it. This, the students will, they work as a team, they write their own scripts and they report on current events in this school. And they also highlight student interests, goals and achievements as they do so. As we have engaged students this year, we also knew that parent engagement with literacy was a super important key to unlock student success. An initiative that we started this year is our Media Center After Hours events. We've held three events so far this year from four o'clock to seven o'clock, and we invite families to visit our school media center and engage in media rich activities, um, and also to just have some time to sit down and read books with their children throughout the year. And those have been very successful. Um, and along with our very um, fun and engaging literacy day, we also had a literacy night where students could come back to the school with their families and complete puzzle activities to help a book to escape from the book vending machine. They also visited stations. We had lots of fun things for them to do, such as creating bookmarks, playing literacy games. And at the end of the night, which is one of my favorite parts, each student and each child in the family were able to go home with a book of their choice for them to keep and treasure. So we really enjoyed um, 
interacting with our families. Intervention is a part of our literacy support this year. One of our interventions and safety nets is our language leap after school program that currently serves second through fifth grade ESOL students. These students attend twice a week and receive extra practice applying literacy skills as well as vocabulary enrichment through mixed grade level concepts and reading groups. Extending the goal, uh, sorry, extending the learning of our gifted learners is another aspect of our safety program this school year. Currently, our gifted enrichment program serves our second through fifth grade students, gifted students. They are collaboratively engaging with a variety of texts and responding to texts and reflecting on texts in creative ways, led by Ms. A, our media specialist. Professional learning is also important. We know that having a mindset of continuous improvement of our own skills is also important. As a school, we have several teachers that are engaged in district-led literacy professional learning opportunities like guided reading and letters. Additionally, we have strategically worked this year with our second and fifth grade teachers through Metro RESA, focusing on guided reading. School-wide, we have focused our staff development on how to use data strategically planned for student needs through individual supports like goal setting and small group intervention and enrichment planning for all grade level teachers. Ultimately, we want our students to grow and achieve grade level expectations. As you can see from this chart, of average Lexile levels as measured through star reading assessments, students continue to grow, but we have not achieved grade level expectations as of March. Closing the gap of current achievement to the expected achievement can be seen more in grades four and five, which we do celebrate. But as I said earlier, we still have work to do. As engagement in literacy has been foundation, our foundational goal, we did want to highlight our independent reading statistics. The statistics for the current school year reflect our current library book circulation and engagement with Mayon, reflect our numbers as, an early, as of early March. As you can see, we will never take for granted the opportunities to hold the book in our hands as the 2021 year shows that we only had 1,132 books circulated during the pandemic. Finally, we want to highlight our accelerated reader data for this school year. As you can see, the accelerated reader program has more success with our fourth and fifth grade students. Reviewing this data with our teachers and students will help us to create the needed support and set strategic goals for our students. And we'd like to say thank you for the opportunity to share today Pine Street's literacy journey this school year. We are very thankful for the L4GA grant and the opportunities it has provided our students. Uh, we also want to, of course, thank you guys for your support and the district office staff to guide our continued growth journey. And we also have a gift from our school uh, in the white bag as well. So to extend our appreciation even further in a gift like fashion. But thank you. I thank have a Principal Beer. Um, do we have any comments or questions? I love what y'all are doing, um, and I think it's very valuable. I just had a quick question on the cool little book vending machine. Mm -hmm. Is that a book that they have to turn back in, or is that their book to keep? That is a great question. So it is a book to keep. And so the students, actually we've correlated it with their PBIS points. So obviously with Literacy Night, they did do a puzzle to break out a book. Yeah. Uh, so they got to keep that book. And then of course, students can trade in their PBIS rewards points to purchase books as well. Um, and they get a special 
They have tried to put money in it. That does not make it work. <laughs> so they do have to have a very special coin that Miss A keeps in the very special media center bank <laughs> that they can trade in their points. And then they use it and they get to choose just like you would a Coke or a snack. And then they get to choose and all the titles are on on the visible to them. So that's been very, they love that's it. They love that. Yeah. Um, it is a very heavy item. It will never move from where it is right now. Um, but I know other schools have also joined in that. It's, it is a unique opportunity for choice and student ownership in a book. So good things. Yeah, and Ms. Veer, I, I certainly want to publicly commend you and your leadership team for your consistent advocacy for literacy. Uh, as an example, you heard her mention earlier the after hours, the meetings and after hours. That was a request uh, from Ms. Veer because obviously we do have a structure in place of, of uh, because of the safety piece, uh, do, the, making that request to the superintendent's office. And certainly I was very happy to approve that. You have a strong advocate in your assistant superintendent as well in reviewing those safety plans. But uh, Ms. Veer is just one example of what is pretty pervasive across all of our schools in terms of our schools uh, requesting and advocating for events like this as parents have returned to the to the school uh, in greater numbers as the pandemic has continued to recede. So I wanted to publicly yeah, commend you for that. It is a sweet time to see parents sitting on the variety of fun benches in the media center reading with their children because that's really a great model for them. Well, thank you so much. All right. Okay, Dr. Oates, Madam Vice Chair Duncan, and Board Member Akita Palmer, would you please join me in recognizing some of our outstanding accomplishments of our students and their families? Good evening, Ms. Brown. Give me just a minute. We're, not gonna, we're gonna hold on the on the certificates for just a minute. Uh, Madam Chair Brown, Madam Vice Chair Duncan, board members and guests, I'm actually going to begin a little bit different this evening in honor of March being National Art, Dance, Music and Theater in our Schools Month. I will begin by reading the superintendent's endorsement of the fine arts in our schools. It reads, whereas art, dance, music, and theater education is a viable academic endeavor and contributes educational benefits to all elementary and secondary students, including the following. Art, dance, music, and theater education develops students' creative problem-solving and critical thinking abilities. It teaches sensitivity to beauty, order, and other expressive qualities. It gives students a deeper understanding of multicultural values and beliefs. And art, dance, music, and theater education reinforces and brings to life what students learn in other subjects. Whereas our national leaders have acknowledged the necessity of including fine arts experiences in all students' education. And whereas March is officially recognized as Youth, Art, Dance, Music, and Theater Month. Rockdale County Public Schools endorses the observance of National Art, Dance, Music, and Theater Month and encourages the support and quality, the support of quality school fine arts programs for all children and youth. And I would like to um, just take a moment. We do have some of our fine arts teachers here in, in the room with us. I know we have Ms. King and we have Ms. Rojas. And um, of course, we may have some viewing, so I'd like to give them all a round of applause for what they do for our children. And with that, we will start recogniz recognizing some of our great artists in our school system. For many years, the anniversary of the founding of the Georgia colony at Savannah on February 12th, 1733 has been known as Georgia Day. Go back one. There you go. Recognized in many ways across the state, each year the Georgia Historical 
Historical Society hosts fun and unique opportunities for Georgia students to explore our state's past through the lens of historical research and creativity. The students of all grade levels can compete by creating original artwork on the annual theme. This year's theme was made in Georgia. After being reviewed and judged for their creativity and use of festival educational resources, projects will be featured online and through the Georgia Historical Society social media. This statewide art contest is open to students of all grade levels with categories for elementary, middle, and high school. Young artists are asked to illustrate the products, industries, and people who influence Georgia's economic landscape. For example, products may include peaches, peanuts, cotton, pecans, or pecans, however you say it, and marble, um, or it may feature people such as sharecroppers, miners, entrepreneurs, and textile workers, and industries such as agriculture, mining, textile industry, and transportation and tourism. Tonight, we will recognize three students from General Ray Davis Middle School who were winners in this year's statewide art contest. First, and students, when I call your name, if you'll come up and get your certificate and then stay um, up front and we'll do a group photo when we have everybody. First, we have um, from eighth grade General Ray Davis Middle School, Kaylee Williams winning overall state winner. Next, from seventh grade General Ray Davis Middle School, we have Michaela McCraney, best use of theme. And also in seventh grade from General Ray Davis Middle School, Michelle Aguilar, winning most creative. Parents, you're welcome to come up and grab a photo as well, and we will post ours on our social media. The district has Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, but feel free to come on up here. Congratulations. The annual All-State Art Symposium is dedicated to promoting and recognizing the creative talents of high school students from Georgia's districts. The symposium's workshops, jury exhibition, and other events provide high school students with cultural opportunities, develop advanced studio skills, and cultivate aesthetic appreciation while recognizing excellence in high school art education. Through the dynamic symposium, students, parents, and teachers celebrate creativity and the symbiotic re relationship of art in society. Tonight, we will recognize three students from Heritage High School whose artwork was accepted into the 2023 All-State Art Symposium. This is an extremely high honor since there were over 2,000 entries this year from 104 different schools and only 50 works were accepted by the panel of esteemed judges. That's amazing. Out of 104 schools participating, Heritage High School had three of only 50 works selected as finalists. Congratulations on that. Students, when I call your name, if you'll come to the front to receive your certificate. First in 10th grade, we have Christina Luong. In 12th grade, we have um, Syrian Wilkes. And in 11th grade, Alana Krobach.
And let me um, apologize that we have your name misspelled on my sheet. It's Carrie Ann Wilkes. My apologies. Congratulations. Now we're going to shift to music. The mission of the Georgia Music Educators Association is to promote the advancement of music education in Georgia. To do this, they sponsor conferences for our teacher members, providing continuing education and professional growth opportunities. For the students of their members, they provide performance evaluations for individuals and ensembles. They also organize the All-State Performance Program for band, orchestra, chorus, and a few other divisions. Tonight, we will recognize three students who were selected for the All-State Performance Program. From Rockdale County High School, making All-State Band fourth chair for tuba, Alton Ellis. Also from Rockdale County High School, All-State Band First Alternate uh, Bass Euphonium, John Williams Jr. From Rockdale Magnet School for Science and Technology, playing the violin, making All-State Orchestra for the sixth consecutive year, Jessica Ree. Congratulations. You may be seated, but I'm not quite done yet. But I'm done with students. Yes. This week is also Georgia School Board's Appreciation Week. We join the statewide celebration this week to salute the efforts of Georgia of local school board members in Georgia. The week-long observance calls attention to the contributions of local boards of education. In our press release earlier this week, Dr. Oates stated, the Rockdale County Board of Education continues to be among the best in the state. This award-winning board has earned the Georgia School Boards Association's exemplary board designation for each eligible year, a total of seven times, and has won the Leading Edge Award for the past four consecutive years. That warrants applause. He went on to say, we appreciate the work of our board to provide the resources needed to support the academic, social, emotional, and behavioral needs of our students and staff. We are sincerely grateful for the dedication of our board members who regularly attend district and school events and continuously strive to make sure RCPS remains a great place to go to teach, lead, and learn. Board members are elected to be the community's voice on education and represent a continuous commitment to local citizen control and decision making in education. As constitutional officers of Georgia, school board members are responsible for setting educational policies, employing school personnel, providing buildings and equipment, operating a transportation system, and dispersing school funds. As community leaders, school board members serve as advocates for children in local public schools and must study, evaluate, and decide what actions are in the best interest of these students. Tonight, we recognize those serving in our school district and those years of service. We have um, handmade 
a handmade plates and cards from General Ray Davis Middle School, and I know Pine Street extended a gift as well. And then we also have a certificate and a lunch cooler for you in your red bags. We'd like to once again extend our appreciation to each one of our board members, and I will just read your names and your years of service. Our chairwoman, Pamela J. Brown, six, serving six years since January 2017. Our vice chairwoman, Heather Duncan, six years since January 2017. Mr. Wales Barksdale, 18 years since January 2005. Ms. Sandra Jackson Lett, four years since January 2019. Our newest board member, Ms. Janie Jones, three months since January 2023. Ms. Mandy North, 10 years since January 2013. And Ms. Akita Palmer, two years since January 2021. Once again, thank you to each and every one of you. At this time, I would like to call for a recess as we congratulate students and their families.
It is now 749. We are back in session. It is, let's see. Okay, where is it? At this time, we will allow our citizens to have three minutes to speak or addre and address the board. Please feel free to submit any documents at this time. We do not normally address your concerns tonight but we ask the administration to address your concerns and provide you with an appropriate response. If your topic involves a personal matter, personnel matter, or if you contend that your legal rights have been violated, we have specific grievance procedures for these matters. We respectfully ask that you refrain from making threats, personal attacks, slanderous remarks, or engaging in behavior that disrupts the decorum of this meeting. I would like to welcome Ms. Tanae Davis. Please come to the podium. Welcome, Ms. Davis. Thank you. I'm trying to get ready because I only have three minutes. So good evening, everyone. Greetings, Board Chair um, Brown, Vice Chair Duncan, um, board members, and Dr. O. So my name is Dr. Tanae Davis, and I am the proud parent of the first grader at Lorraine Elementary School. My husband, myself, and my two daughters, three and six years old, are new to the county as of December 2019. And to say the least, we have been extremely pleased with our time here thus far, um, not only within Rockdale County, but RCPS itself. I can't speak highly enough about their education. Um, my child is receiving at Lorraine. I'm pretty pleased with the level of communication I received from the district regarding district news, events, and resources. And I'm just overall pleased with the hospitality we've received um, while we've been here. I have, however, been very disturbed by our CPS's policies related to safety and security, specifically the implementation of clear book bags for first through fifth grade students and the use of unproven weapons detection systems specifically for elementary school students. The question is, what do we who are Rockdale County citizens want and want for our county and our CPS? What is our vision for our beloved county and school? We determine that. We have the power to shape the school system into what we envision it to be. We don't have to be, nor should we be beholden to be a reflection of society, to be a reflection of the ills and all that's wrong with society. Because what does society say about majority minority schools, let alone a majority minority school system? Failure underachievement, dysfunction. We have not accepted those to be true, so why must we now accept what society says about our children and our families? When we give our youngest children clear book bags and make them walk through weapons detection systems, what are we telling them? The world sees you as criminal and so do we. The world sees you as unworthy of trust and so do we. Please don't be fooled to believe that this is the best way or, or even the most optimal way of keeping them safe, as experts tell us it's not. Experts tell us forming that experts tell us that forming relationships within school communities keep school communities safe. This is why the school district that had the most horrific mass shooting has not implemented a clear book bag policy for their elementary schools, nor has it implemented the use of weapons detection systems for its elementary schools. Instead, Sandy Hook has instituted the Sandy Hook Promise. This initiative focuses on preventing school violence, shooting and other harmful acts by offering programs that teach students and teachers how to identify at risk behaviors and intervene to get help. 
They had a vision for their school system that did not intend to criminalize their most vulnerable students. Instead, they worked to empower the school. Ma'am, I would like to stop you now. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Someone will be in touch with you. I would like to turn to Dr. Oates again for an update with his cabinet. Good evening, Madam Chair Brown, Madam Chair Duncan, Madam Vice Chair Duncan, uh, Dr. Oates, members of the board. I'll be going over the final financial reports for the month of February. <laughs> that might help, huh? All right. Okay, the revenue for February is 10.4 million. Uh, the revenue uh, year to date is 142.2 million, which is 78.6% of our budget. Uh, last year in February, we received 10.1 million, 136 million year to date, which was 79.4% of our budget. The expense expenditures for February, 15.6 million. 123 million year to date, which is 66.7% of our budget. Uh, last February, we expended 14 million, 112.7 million year to date, which is 65.8% of our budget. Our outstanding encumbrances at the end of February is $1,678,460. Uh, our fund balance at the end of February is approximately 57.8 million compared to last February of 52.2 million. Our assets, uh, 57.8 million approximately. All our liabilities cleared in February and our fund balance approximately 57.8 million. Any questions? Thank you all. Thank you, Keith. Mr. Hull has uploaded the physical year 23 SPLOS 5 statement for February 2023 under information Please review that information, financial information. The board has reviewed the minutes for all board meetings held in February. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes for all board meetings held in February? So moved. Second, Akita Carter. A motion to approve February board minutes as presented has been made by uh, Vice Chair Duncan and second by Akita Palmer. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. At this time, I want to yield to Dr. Oates for comments. Indeed, thank you very much, Madam Chairwoman. Again, Madam Vice Chairwoman, our distinguished board members and executive cabinet members and our guests, which includes, of course, uh, faculty, uh, staff members, and, and some of our parents. Uh, I just want to echo what uh, our Chief uh, Communications Officer said earlier, Cindy want to commend this Board of Education for its collective nearly half century of service uh, to uh, the Rockdale County school communities. And uh, I would reiterate that um, it, you, it's easy to take for granted the breadth and depth of their accomplishments as recognized by the Georgia School Boards Association. Seven times they've been named exemplary board an exemplary board by the Georgia School Boards Association. Four times they've been uh, extended the leading edge award for various school district innovations. And uh, some other things that I really love about this board is they love Rockdale County. And I also made note that uh, we have board members who are either currently a parent of a current student or parents of alumni of Rockdale County Public Schools. And then I think we even have up here a couple of board members who they themselves are alumni of Rockdale County Public Schools. Can you guess who those are? <laughs> okay. Now, it, it, yes, indeed, that warrants applause. Now, I'm going to let you ask them which class, what year <laughs> class did they, did they represent. But listen, uh, I, earlier you heard Miss um, uh, Ball indicate the tenure of each of our board members. And of course, I want to take this opportunity, a point of personal privilege, to yield to our most tenured board member for any comments that he may wish to make, the, the Honorable Mr. Wales Parksdale. Seven grandchildren, and as of Friday, I tendered my resignation to the governor and to the superintendent because I'm going to attempt to get into shape to I can chase them. All right. Okay. All right, indeed. 
Uh, and if there are any board members who would like to make any comments uh, to uh, Mr. Barksdale, feel free to do so. I would like to make a comment. Mr. Barksdale, I want to just thank you for um, the commitment that you have made almost 20 years. I can't even imagine that, but clearly you are committed to serving this community and the students here in Rockdale County. And I'm honored to have had the opportunity to serve side by side with you. And I know that you are really looking forward to spending more time with your family, but I want you to know how much I appreciate you. Um, just being there every time I call you, you do answer. <laughs> and just putting up with me. Um, so thank you so much. And I hope that you will still be around in some in some way. I'm going to ditto what um, Pam just said. But on a personal note, Wells, you are absolutely one of the best I've known for the last um, years that I've been on this board. There's never a moment that I can't call and you have um, sound advice. You know, I, I recognize how committed, how committed you are to this community. The decisions that you make, you know, are, they're always in the best interest of our teachers. You fight so hard for them. I'm going to miss that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to know that you're around the corner, that we can still pick your brain because of the years of experience that you've gone through as a leader for us and as a voice for this community. So thank you for that. And I look forward to working with you as a normal citizen. Any more comments from the board? Well, so I would just like to say thank you so much for your service, for the longevity that you've been on the board and in the leadership roles that you've served on the board as vice chair, as chair. And we've all learned to look to you to give advice and you've got a great memory all the way back to when you were a student here. So um, it's just always good to hear the stories that you've had and I've enjoyed serving with you and I appreciate all the service that you've done and look forward to still being able to get together for lunch or whatever. And I promise I won't give you COVID this time. <laughs> I would like to say, uh, Mr. Barksdale, um, thank you for your service. I was most definitely looking forward to working uh, with you as we continue to make good decisions or the best decisions for the students here in Rockdale County. Um, I wish you the best. And I also would like to thank you for your service. Um, I've only been on the board for a couple of years, but your name carried wide before I even joined the board. Thank you for being an advocate for our students here in Rockdale County. And I wish you all the best with your grandchildren and get in shape so you can run behind them, okay? <laughs> Sandra. So I guess I have to talk. Wells, you know how I feel about you and what I feel about you. Thank you for your service to Rockdale County, not just the school system, but the community. We know that you will still be here on our side, fighting for the best interest of our students and our staff. Love on your grandchildren, love on your new wife, and be happy. Okay. There is no old business and there is no new business. Last week, the cabinet provided an extensive overview of all action items and the board voted to place the action items on a consent agenda. Do I hear a motion to approve the action items under the consent agenda? All right. A motion to approve the action items under the consent agenda has been made by uh, Madam Vice Chair Duncan and a second by Ms. Um, North, is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carries. There is no board discussion. Do I hear a motion to go into executive session to discuss personnel? Second. There is a, uh, a motion to go into executive session to discuss personnel. It has been made by North and second by Ms. Duncan. All in favor? Motion carries.
It is now 814. Do I hear a motion um, to uh, appoint Santana as the general counsel for Rockdale County Public Schools for a term of three years, effective July the 1st, 2023. So moved, Heather. Second. Andrew Jackson, let's. Okay. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Motion carried unanimously. With no further business to discuss, do I hear a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Second. A motion has been made to adjourn the meeting by Barksdale and second by Jones. All in favor? Meeting is adjourned. 815. It was yet.